Hey everybody, it's Master Gallengeist here, bringing you my review for the latest episode of The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, The Whole World is Watching. Sweet good God, that is so long to say. <laughs> However, I really enjoyed this episode because, well, we got a lot of plot movement things, and granted, even though what happened at the end pissed me off royally, how we got to that point was definitely interesting, and I am intrigued to see what the fallout is going to be. So, interestingly enough, we start off this episode six years ago in Wakanda. And this is important because it actually showcases the relationship between the Dora Milaje that we are talking, what Bucky's talking with uh, previously, Aya. And we see that Bucky and her are six years in the past, and she's pretty much running him through the whole Winter Soldier kind of word thing to see if he'll activate. And Bucky, of course, is afraid that he's going to hurt somebody, but she's like, uh, I'm not going to let you hurt anybody. And we definitely see her skills later on, and yes, yeah, she wouldn't let him hurt anybody. But she gets through it, and he's like, I'm not going to do it, I'm not going to do it, as he's like, crying because those words and that activation and everything with the whole Winter Soldier programming, he doesn't want to be that thing, and being able to not do that is an important milestone for him. And she gets through the words, and he doesn't activate, and of course he's crying and uh, trying to kind of like contain himself because of how happy he was with that, and she's like, yeah, you're free. We then get into the present and uh, see kind of what's going on. She, of course, is like, you give us Zemo, because Zemo killed uh, T'Chaka, and that with the Dorma, uh, Milaj, uh, Milaj? Ah. Uh, well, since they're supposed to protect the king, having that death on them showed a great failure for them, and also murdered one of their great rulers, and they want Zemo. Honestly, I don't know how they were able to keep him in Berlin for as long as they were. I thought Okie would be like, hey, uh, be like, hey, give me that motherfucker. And, uh, since everybody, like, during the snap and everything, it'd be like, uh, yeah? Don't, uh, don't want to fucking get into that. And it's like, eh. So I'm like, alright. But, of course, Bucky's like, hey, he's a means to an end. We need him to track down these super soldiers. And she's like, well, we'll give you eight hours. Honestly, I'm almost like that the Wakandans would be like, um, if we had a proliferation of, like, super soldiers... Honestly, there's two ways to handle that scenario. You try and stop the super soldier stuff as much as possible, or you get the super soldier serum and you just fucking give it to everybody. You know? And I understand that the Wakandans wanted uh, Zemo as much as possible, and they have a legitimate fucking claim. Dude fucking assassinated one of their rulers. Um, I'm not here to, like, litigate, like, oh, God. Uh, now, granted... His usefulness in the effect of, like, trying to find, like, the Hydra uh, connections to it while also helping them kind of track down Morgenthau as much as possible would have pretty much been nearing its end at this point anyway. And I, I understand the tension and the drama that we've got. It just needed to be worked a little bit better. Because uh, I'm like, um, yes, this man killed your ruler. But we've got some super uh, super soldier motherfuckers that we kind of need to kind of deal with as well. Uh, honestly, uh, I don't know why we're going to like, you know what? Get a couple of them uh, up in here. Shake this shit out. Fucking rock that shit. I think it could have been done. Intriguing. Just thought of that. But, however, uh, with that kind of line of thinking... They are now given more of a time frame to get Morgenthau and get this kind of wrapped up as soon as possible because the Wakandans are like, give us. So Bucky goes back and they're like, hey, he doesn't even like hoof skip it. He's like, yeah, uh, the Wakandans want your ass. He's like, oh, duh. thank you for going up to bat for me. And he's like, nope. So they're kind of stuck. They're trying to figure out how to get to Carly. And um, Sam is thinking, okay, uh, this Donya chick. She's uh, kind of like a pillar of the community, kind of like my TT. And then Bucky's like, what's your TT? My aunt. She was a pillar of the community. She died. Few funeral. Lots of respects paid. Let's kind of 
So if this person was as big as that kind of influence, let's just kind of go check that shit out. Of course, Zemo then starts doing kind of like a positive reinforcement. Ooh, I think your TT would be very proud. Turkish delight. And Tal says one to Sam. It's like, okay. That becomes important because he uses it as his kind of currency for bribery later on. So they decide to go out and uh, they're pretty much trying to check what's going on in this community. They're able to get to the place that we've seen Carly and everything then they kind of like go their separate ways. Sam tries to go up and talk to some people and they keep shutting them out. Um, this one dude's like, hey, I know who you are. I don't trust you. You're an outsider. It's like, all right, that's not really going to help much. It's like, yeah, everybody who says that they're going to help uh, normally doesn't. Now, granted, I understand the whole kind of issue of having like half of all life popped back into existence. However, this is still... I understand the whole refugee kind of thing going on here. Now, granted, they, this dude says that they don't consider themselves refugees. And, okay, I understand that. It has been six months, and this is one of the like largest events pretty much conceivable. And I understand you want as quick a solution done as possible, but that is going to take some motherfucking time on that. And Sam can do some shit. We see a lot of the reasons why he would he is a good Captain America replacement because he's not going around as a dick. He's trying to get to people and like, listen, let me try and help you out. I got connections I can help out. No, never gonna happen. Whatever. Be gone. As he leaves, as well as the kids. He's like, so he gets nothing. Bucky pretty much gets nothing. Uh, Zemo goes around uh, singing about like the black sheep kind of thing and pretty much... Uh, dumps out the Turkish delight, which by the way, after this and like the line, the line, the witch, and the wardrobe, I'm gonna have to figure out what the hell a Turkish delight tastes like, because I've never had one before. But, it's candy, and there's kids, and he's like, hey, you know, don't you? She was a friend of mine. I'd like to know stuff about the funeral. And gives him candy and everything. And then also says, hey, don't trust Bucky and Sam, and gives them more candy and everything. Well, she was able to tell him the information about what was going on with the funeral and <laughs> they're pretty much going to go there and figure it out but the thing is he's pretty much holding the info of where the funeral over their head Bucky's getting pissed off throwing shit off and be like uh, Sam does call him out it's like Bucky calm down if you don't he's going to extort you and do that hell, uh, head tilt thing it's like okay that's pretty good so he pretty much gets on to Sharon to see if she's got any kind of like information because he of course is holding that hostage and asking if she's got uh, uh, use of like a satellite. She's like, yeah, or two. Power brokers, of course, piss. So kind of get on this. We also get some information on how Carly and the rest of them are kind of dealing with everything. Though I kind of would want more information on. Uh, how the rest of the super soldiers within the Flag Smashers feel because we see this uh, news broadcasting talking about how their attack wounded some and killed three people. One, a dude who's only been working there for like a week and was like a father of two. But however, this is like people are trying to stop them, but it's also bringing people to their calls and everything. It's like, okay, this kind of shows an escalation for Carly that I wish was done a little bit better. This episode really has a nice showcase of how Walker is handled better than Carly and that Carly's escalation into I'm gonna start murdering people needed a little bit more work not that it's not not that it's inconceivable that she would get there but it goes a little bit too fast for my opinion and that we needed more on her to kind of get there whereas Walker's part especially when we get to the end feels like a better complete and well-executed narrative to that kind of point. We also see that her and one of the Flag Smashers go to this grave to, of course, get the Super Soldier Serum because she has decided to amp up her army and create more Super Soldiers, uh, where this other Flag Smasher talking about how uh, his grandfather had been in resistance against the Nazis and that if you're scared, you're doing something right, and that he used to be a Captain America fan. And that Carly says that the shield should be destroyed. And I'm like, 
okay. I can understand how, uh, like, once Steve was in the ice and various different kind of things, that the government using it more as a propaganda tool would create more of a negative perception on Cap's kind of legacy with that, with people wanting to destroy the shield. However, it's really kind of hard to look at Steve's legacy, even throughout the MCU, and seeing people be like, we should destroy that shield. Um, why? Uh, he fought in the Battle of New York to help protect people. He fought in World War II to protect people from Hydra and the Nazis. He fought uh, the S.H.I.E.L.D. organization when it was infiltrated by Hydra. He did a whole civil war and voluntarily gave up the S.H.I.E.L.D. Uh, to stick with his principles and his convictions. And then he had the S.H.I.E.L.D. brought back to beat the grimace-looking, uh, <laughs> the purple motherfucker from McDonald's, Thanos, I a little bit more work. I can understand the feeling and what they're trying to give with that. I'm just like, we need a little bit more shown of why they would feel that way because they're like, it's used to keep people out. It's like, the fuck? I usually use, see Steve kind of like using it to protect people. Now, if you were looking at Walker, who hasn't been there that long, I can kind of understand that because he's been usually been using it more as a kind of offensive tool. But, I mean, Steve's used it as an offensive tool to help protect people as well. It's... I want a little bit more work on that. Well, Zemo and our group... Well, <laughs> I, just, I say Zemo kind of leading it because he's the one with the information. They're pretty much getting ready to go to the Earth funeral. Uh, Walker and Battlestar are pretty much like, Hey, I want his ass. Zemo's just like, No, he's got the information. Let's fucking go. He's my contact's there. Sam, of course, wants to talk uh, Carly down because, of course, he's dealt with soldiers through traumatic experiences and wants to and talk her down and stop her from radicalizing even more. Walker wants to go in, bust ass, and take names. Uh, whereas Sam's like, yeah, if we go and fucking go in hot, it could get even worse because there's going to be civilians around there and we can get even more casualties and then that fucks up our whole kind of shit. Because we're seeing that that has kind of started to happen with the Flag Smashers. Now, granted, and up until that certain point, they'd just been stealing shit, food, medicine, other various kind of supplies to help with the people that have been displaced from the blip being reversed. However, once you start taking into the effect that you're going to start killing people, that starts doing that kind of like, uh, that like, hey, fuck you, buddy. No, no, no. I'm going to help you, but if you're going to kill people to kind of get your shit across, we're going to have some issues. So, going in and getting like, that would paint them trying to get the Flag Smashers in a bad light because you've gone into a place that is going to have civilians and openly went, my dick is out, and then attack, and that wasn't supposed to, it's like, my dick is out. It's like, uh, no, don't do that, please, sweet Jesus. No, God, no. You don't want to fucking, like, make that kind of scene where there's civilians around. You, you try and minimize that as much as possible. Uh, and Walker definitely gets caught with his dick out in this one. It's like, oh, nope. So they're able to get there. Zemo is able to uh, follow. He pays off the chick. I don't know where it comes into the effect of where he's like saying that Sam and Bucky were like bad people. That doesn't make any other kind of like effect. But we see him get in. Walker handcuffs Zemo. He wants to go in right away, but they're able to talk him into getting Sam 10 minutes to talk someone down from being a murderous extremist. It's like, what? Okay. And uh, a point of reference that we've also got is that Zemo was talking in the beginning as they were trying to figure out where the funeral was that like uh, Carly's pretty much becoming a supremacist. And that's pretty much the basic kind of uh, rationale for trying to make super soldiers. Well, of course, Bucky brings up the whole thing that, like, this didn't go wrong with Cap, with Steve. He's like, well, Steve's more the exception, but good point. And it's interesting bringing up that whole kind of supremacist thing and see how Carly kind of, like, is going on that kind of path without even trying to realize it. But as we see Zemo kind of like expounding upon that fact later on, it's like he's as much as a supremacist because somebody else is getting power over him that could be also tied to his barren lineage because if you're in the aristocracy, you're usually on the top tier. So yeah, you see anything that could like rise up anybody beneath you, you kind of like 
look out for that shit. So Zemo uh, having that kind of view is kind of interesting. So we'll see kind of how that shakes out. I'll get to that in a minute. So Sam's able to go in. We see that Carly is giving a nice eulogy to Donya and that we need to be one people, one world, try and help people as much as possible and giving Sam the kind of stink eye as everybody kind of like files out. Of course, he's like, comes in and says, I'm sorry for your loss. She's like, don't condescend to me. He's like, I'm not. Sweet Jesus. It's like, can't somebody express like actual sincere condolences? Like, I'm sorry that this person died. Like, the fuck? Like, why would he be uh, condescending you to like a child? Uh, and then saying like, yeah, I've lost fucking people. He lost his fucking aunt. He talked about his fucking aunt. It's like, what the fuck? But he's trying to like, like, I emphasize, empathize with your fight. But you're going about it the wrong way. And of course she brings up that uh, they need the super soldier serums. Uh, he uh, wants to know if she's going to be making any more. Calling the people that she pretty much murdered obstacles in her way. And he's like, wow. And the way he's trying to do it is a very kind of Steve Manor. This is a very good scene of showcasing why Sam is great to carry on Steve's legacy. Because if you not ran it there would be differences because of like lived experience and everything but this is the same kind of thing that Steve would do he's trying to talk her down and trying to be like listen let's try and figure out this fight the right way because going to violence is going to get you you're either going to win but at a completely and utterly bloody cost or it's just going to create the whole violence feedback loop of you fucking take somebody else out and that's going to piss somebody else off. And they're going to come and take you out. And that's going to piss somebody else off. And they're going to be fucking going down the list until there's nobody fucking left. Because that's usually how it goes. <laughs> because one side decides, okay, this person's a threat, so we're going to take him out. Then the other side uses them as a martyr. And it's just complete and utter insanity of the destruction eventually. And sure, her, she's trying to create a better world for the people involved, but... She's going about it in the wrong way, and Sam understands that. She also hits him with, like, why are you here instead of, like, uh, fighting for your home? And he's like, my sister is asking me. i got to answer that for my sister as well. However, Walker's become an impatient little douche canoe and decides to go in before, well, we don't know how long before, but he's like, you're under arrest. She's like, fuck you, man. You were just trying to hold me out. It's like, shit. So we start seeing this chase sequence going on. Uh... Bucky tries to get on her, but is not able to keep up with her because she gets, like, uh, lost in the crowd. But Zemo was able to escape and finds her, shoots her a little bit, and she, of course, drops the super soldier serum. He starts scratching it, but, like, one is left behind. And Zemo kind of, like, runs out. But Walker comes in at the last minute. and Well, not runs out. He gets knocked out by Walker, and Walker's able to see one vial, picks it up, and, like, hmm, that's not going to end badly at all Carly kind of gets herself sewed up the other people are trying to figure out what's going on uh, they're like well the power broker's pissed off we got a war on two fronts here we can't make any more super soldiers she also references that they're like chosen she's like alright I'm going to take Sam off the board by doing what I need to and somehow she's able to get the information of who Sam's sister is where she is and stuff about like their home and uh her sister's kids hitting on her sisters uh the sister's kids it's like how do they fucking get that information now the thing is it's not that she's not able to but that sounds like something the power broker information wise would be able to get more so than her since they've been more kind of an underground guerrilla group kind of like hitting shit in europe having access to that kind of information never mind having the capital and resources to obtain that information is a little bit like what and then she's like yeah um Tell your brother to meet me at this coordinates, or I'm going to have to meet you and your kids at the dock out back. It's like, oh, okay. So she has gone from, I am a freedom fighter, to I am going to murder and threaten people. It's it's kind of going, the execution and going a little bit fast for me. So we also, we then go and we see this other kind of great scene, action scene too, where they're kind of figuring out what's going on. Zemo, of course, got his ass handed to him with a shield to the face and is talking with Sam about if he would take the super soldier serum if he was offered it. 
And Sam goes, no. And it's like, oh, no hesitancy. I admire that. And I'm just like, okay. I understand where they're trying to go for because this is supposed to be juxtaposed against the later scene with, of course, John and Battlestar. And... Of course, Zemo thinks that super soldiers shouldn't exist, and like Sam rightfully like, well, that sounds pretty godlike to me, and so it's a different form of supremacy. It's kind of like uh, the whole mutants, non-mutants kind of thing, where you're like, oh god, these people can do all this kind of shit. Uh, I don't want them to exist, kind of shit. I'm like, no, no. Everybody's got the capacity to do horrible, horrendous shit. Doesn't matter if you got the ability to fart fire out your ass. Uh, a person given the capabilities and the way to think about it could do just as much damage as firefighter right there. So even if they are a super soldier, it it's like, okay? Fucking weird? Well, they're pretty much trying to figure out what to do next, and the, of course, Walker's like, give me Zemo now. And of course, they're like, listen, we still need to figure out what's going on. Carly's in the wind now. Uh, and we kind of need to figure out our next game plan. They're almost getting ready to come to blows, but of course Ao and her uh, her group pop up and like, uh, we want Zemo now. And of course Walker is trying to be like, hey, yeah, uh, let's talk about this, but he's being really kind of douchey in it, and uh, of course the Wakandans are not having any of it. Like, we have jurisdiction wherever we are. And it's like, yep, that kind of happens when... <laughs> Uh, you kind of got like access to crazy ass technology and a motherfucker that murdered shit just like back there it's like mm. and we see a fight sequence as Walker pretty much gets his ass into him same with Battle Stars uh, the Wakandans are like yeah of course Bucky tries to, <laughs> at first is like uh, go, looking strong there Walker uh, but then he kind of like goes in and Sam, they're trying to, like, let's defuse this. This is nuts. Of course, Zemo uses this opportunity to pretty much escape in his bathroom because there's, like, a great thing that he, like, goes out. And, um... Uh, we see that A.R. Uh, A.R. What the fuck? A.O. Uh, is taking on Bucky and uses this kind of thing to pretty much detach his arm. It's like, yeah, I could understand, uh, being able to do that because, granted, Bucky's kind of cool in the White Wolf, but he was a brainwashed uh, super assassin, so you kind of have to watch out for that shit. Eh? And she, of course, says goodbye in Russian, and we see some cool-ass like, moves with their spears and everything, and one of them like, tossing it and like pinning down Walker's shield, and the Wakandan is able to kind of like um, uh, take the shield down and do the kind of like flip with the shield as she takes it. Of course, A.R. sees that uh, Zemo's gone, and she's like, leave the shield. And they kind of leave, and Walker just belatedly says they weren't even super soldiers as they whooped his ass. And we see those cracks going on. He's come under so much mental strain trying to be Captain America and really just loving this all the way throughout these episodes that you just see it kind of cracking on him. And we see him and Lamar having this kind of conversation out in uh, Broad Daylight, where he, like, signs this kind of stuff for these people because they wanted autographs. He, of course, asks Lamar, uh, Battlestar, if he would take the Super Soldier Serum. He's like, yeah, uh, if we had that uh, back in uh, where they had gotten their Purple Heart, well, not Purple Heart, it's Congressional Medal of Honor. Why the fuck? Match has been on, too. And there's some weird-ass kind of, not weird, there's some episodes dealing with the Purple Hearts. That was pretty funny. That's kind of where that one came from. Ooh. But where, they, where Walker pretty much got his Congressional Medals of Honor, and he's like, we did a lot of things over there that didn't really feel right, and Captain America feels right to me, and just that kind of seals his deal for, of course, taking the serum, which we see, because Lamar's talking about how the Super Soldier Serum, I like this kind of mediation on like what power does, because you always hear the kind of refrain that like power cor uh, power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. I kind of like how we go here that power kind of like reveals who you really are. You know what I mean? That doesn't necessarily mean that uh, 
if you get some kind of powers that you'll become giant douche canoe motherfucker uh, king tyrant fuck boy but granted that would be a hell of a business card yeah there's the possibility that we'll bring out your darkest urges now Steve is usually the kind of one held up as the good example and of course the Red Skull is brought up as the bad example because it amplified the negatives and we can see this kind of amplifying the negatives within Carly because she's like I need to fucking handle this shit so we then see that uh, Sam gets the call from his sister and he's pissed off and he tells Bucky about it and she tells uh, he tells his sister to pretty much get the boys leave just paying cash get somewhere safe and he of course does get contacted by Carly and she is of course trying to take Sam off the board and Sharon also has a tracker on Walker so we'll have that situation kind of like hammered out because he wants to know when Walker is going to be moving on Carly because he's been a crazy loose cannon fuckboy at this point and Sam wants to know when he's doing shit so that way if he is attempting to do something more peaceful it doesn't get completely and utterly shut upon However, as Sam being, as me understanding like a brother whose sister has just been threatened by a terrorist, uh, I'll be like, I will want this stopped now. And if I need to fucking fight, I'm gonna do it. So he goes in uh, Falcon style. Bucky's in his uh, fighting gear. They go up and she's like, nope. I just wanted to see what kind of person you were and if you'd want to join me. It's like, ah, uh, fucking great ass fucking way to do that and Sam is like nope we, s we need to stop this of course Sharon gets in contact with Sam and that Walker is moving on the other Flag Smashers Carly of course wants to go in and uh, support them because their idea is to now kill Captain America granted I can understand them getting to that goal but it's kind of like we need a couple more steps and understand how that would kind of help their cause at all because uh, otherwise that would kind of piss off more people especially the US government and be like um she just killed our propaganda tool system kind of thing uh we're gonna we're gonna fucking do some shit so it's like um, did you think this through mm. so she's uh Bucky's pretty much running after her we see uh Falcon kind of like blast off but we see that uh, before they kind of get there, uh, Walker is going through with Battlestar. Battlestar pretty much gets captured, and we see, of course, different kind of aspects of Walker. He's able to, like, blast through a door. Uh, he has a kind of knife fight with a super soldier, and he does make the comment at one point, what's with all the knives? Well, see, that's the thing. With a super soldier, uh, your biggest kind of advantages are the physical, and knives would be the kind of closest thing that you can have an extension of yourself that's, like, within your kind of realm of possibility, especially since you're using more of a shield that would make you more kind of close range as well, so you'd be able to get in and kind of stabby stabby and do shit. But we see him utilizing strength more than usual, like fucking throwing uh, the shield into a wall, so it's like, uh, yeah, he took the super soldier serum. Lamar then gets pretty much like strung up in this like bathroom kind of thing before he's able to kind of like get himself out. Sam, of course, and Bucky, well, Sam gets in there first, and we see him kind of, like, teaming up with Walker as they're, like, taking on some uh, Flag Smashers. He, of course, makes the whole knife comment. We see Sam doing a lot of kind of cool stuff with his uh, wings and all that, his uh, thrusters to, like, kind of give a, like, hot heat burn to, like, one of the Flag Smashers. So this was a really kind of cool fight scene to, again, see different kind of ways that people are utilizing certain things. Uh, like we saw John take out this one flag smasher and um, bent up this pipe. So it's like, yeah, he's super strong. Uh, and in this fight, this is the kind of more pivotal fight. He utilizes the shield kind of more fluidly or kind of more kind of similar to Steve's kind of way of utilizing it. And they're pretty much like bashing through. And then, of course, we see Bucky popping in because he had to deal with the flag smasher and everything because he saw like Walker dealing with the one who's like what the well no that was Sam I think yeah Bucky like pretty much kicked a dude through a wall so, like, what the fuck's going on with this and that's kind of what's going on there 
Uh, we see that Bucky pops in. We see Lamar is able to get in, and they're pretty much getting ready to try and take out Walker. But Lamar is able to insert himself, and we kind of get a similar kind of moment with Walker with what happened with Stephen Bucky on the train, where Carly kind of pretty much linebackers the motherfucker, and the thing is, he gets, like, thrown into a pillar, and it kills him. This, of course, kind of freaks everybody out, which I don't really understand. Oh, I understand you killed somebody that you didn't mean to. But you were going to murder the new Captain America, so he is kind of freaking out right now, so this is the perfect kind of opportunity for you to kill him. Now, granted, it's probably like uh, they're not used to the killing tactics, even though Carly should be more used to him since she fucking, like, firebombed a place. Now, the other ones who barely had names. I can understand them being like, I'm not into this. They probably were, like, into it to be like, hey, she's gonna kill him. That's not me. Kind of thing, kind of rationalization, but we don't really have that much insight into him because they're, like, really more background people. So everybody pretty much scatters, but the one dude who was talking about his uh, grandfather being a uh, Nazi resistance fighter is pretty much latched onto by Walker, and he chases after him. And he, like, wants to know where Carly is, but the dude's, like, laying down near a fountain, like, I don't know, I don't know. And then he just starts, like, using the shield to, like, smash his face in to the point where he, like, kills him in broad daylight as other people. Well, it looks like he's killed in broad daylight. I I don't know if it's completely confirmed or if he was, like, really fucked up, but he went super soldier rage having just lost his partner. But it shows why he's not really a good Captain America, because Steve lost Bucky, but he didn't go and he didn't fucking murder anybody afterwards. This showcases that the super soldier serum did kind of amplify Walker's whole inferiority complex, because once he got to a point where he had strength over someone, he used it to pretty much bash their, bash him in with Steve's shield. And we see him like looking around as everybody's looking around. We see Carly looking on. We see uh, Sam and Bucky looking on as we get the little shot of the shield uh, blood soaked. And it pissed me off because I'm like, you used that shield that Steve used to like help people and save people and you murdered someone with it and you tainted that shit you fuck and the thing is I understand you lost a battle companion you lost your friend you don't go and become that which you were trying to apprehend and stop otherwise you've got no leg to stand on you're just gonna going, I'm gonna just go murder people. And then, fuck, man, that gives them, then, I'm like, that's justification just for them to go and do the same thing. And, like, don't be surprised when other people start playing by the rules of the game that you start fucking doing as well. So, it's like, alright, uh, we'll have to see how this kind of goes down, because people were filming it. That's out on the internet. And it's really kind of crazy, because I kind of got Homelander vibes from it, however, let me quantify that. It's not on the level of Homelander, okay? Homelander is on a whole nother ball field sucking on breast milk and shit. I swear to God. Fucking hell. But it's like, he's like in that rage mode and it's just like, he's tainted this thing of Captain America and... I understand that it broke him, and he was feeling inferior, and he wanted to feel strong and better and try and stop these people, but that's not how you do it, man. So it'll be very interesting to see the fallout of that going on and see how this is going to kind of shake out, because I hope that Sam seeing that, okay, you might have qualms about the shield, about what Captain America represents, but... As heroes in and of yourselves, that needs to be stopped. And that needs to be done completely. And if that means that you gotta take up the shield, Bucky's gotta take up the shield, you lock that shield in some other place, and those motherfuckers try and put out another kind of propaganda tool that's gonna probably go crazy because they don't give a shit about them, you're gonna have to deal with it. And it's just like, oh. 
that's I'm really intrigued to see how now granted this mainly justifies Bucky's position all right I wouldn't have been surprised if like you put five extra minutes onto this Bucky went up smacked every loving fucking shit out of that dude took that shield and been like nah -uh. no Sam of course would have to like uh, he want to see kind of like how he wants to go about it but I would think he'd be like uh, we're taking that shield that ain't right so I can't wait to see the next episode so those are my opinions on the episode tell me what you guys think in the comments below if you liked it if you didn't like it, if you agree with me, if you disagree with me, also like and subscribe, and I hope you have a good day.